hello welcome to you know this lesson of our study of you know writing mathematical proofs and so this is the lesson that talks about direct proofs so in our last lesson i mentioned that direct proof is being included in contrapositive and that is true because um after stating the contrapositive of your statement the direct proof is being used um and you will always want to use contrapositive when you realize that um a resource is being stated first and then before the input all right so what i mean by that is that in case of in, in terms of this problem i have here in the problem a if x and y are odd so these are the inputs and this is the result but in terms of the contrapositive mostly the output is being given or the result is being given and then these inputs are given later so you might want to start with input showing results you know so yeah um you're going to solve three problems in this the first problem is if x and y are odd integers then x y is odd so direct proof is just saying that you just did the um the attribute of x and y what are they they are odd so i'm going to prove this so proof using direct proof so x and y odd means that so i'm supposing that suppose that x and y are odd then what can you say when they are all this means they are odd integers right so in terms of integers s can be written as some two multiplying an integer plus one since it's odd that is the definition of an odd number and then y is equal to 2k or maybe 2m plus one then x y in terms of their definition is going to be 2n plus 1 multiplying 2m plus 1 and this after simplifying is going to give you 4nm plus 2n plus 2m plus 1 you know when you expand that that is what you're going to get and i can factor you know 2 from this 2 from that and 2 from this guy so you're going to be 2 into 2nm plus n plus m or plus 1 right but the whole of this is going to give you integer because n m are integers right so the proper thing to do here is to say that where n and m are integers so you should include that right so n m are integers so if i add them i'm going to get an integer if i multiply two by that multiply them i'm going to get an integer two multiplying that that will give me an integer so everything i sum here is going to give you an integer say p okay where p is equal to 2nm plus n plus m and all these this belong to the integers and we know that xy is giving us 2p plus 1 where p is an integer and p is coming from here right so this is the definition of an integer so it means that indeed xy is odd right when both of them x and y are odd x is also odd so this completes the proof you are done this is pretty simple right so let's go to the next one now let a b c be integers if a divides b and then a divides c then a divides a plus c so in terms of the direct proof what you are supposed to know or notice is that you should know the definition of whatever mathematical statement that is being written so here the proof is going to use the divisibility defini definition right so suppose or given so you can start with giving a device b and a device c or you can say suppose that right that is what is being supposed in this problem then this implies that what a device b is a definition in mathematics that means that b can be written as a multiple of a right or you can say that b divided by a is giving you will give you a, 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 an integer right so this is going to be some integer and then c is also equal to um so with this i can call this two i can call them some equation numbers okay let me give them some this let me call it equation one where n is an integer right now c can be written as um a multiplying some m this one to the same thing equation two with 
M an integer. So that is the definition of divisibility. Now, if I add equation one and two, this will imply that I will have adding both sides. So I'll add these sides. I'm going to have B plus C, and that's going to give me adding the other side. Okay. So that's also going to give me A N plus plus A M. And so this will imply that I'm going to have B plus C equals A into N plus M. But N plus M, N and M are both integers. So N plus M is going to give you an integer, right? So this is going to be B plus C equals A times some constant Q, where Q is an integer, right? And this belongs to the integers. So then... It means B plus C can be written as a multiple of A or A multiplying something, multiplying an integer. Notice that this is an integer, so it's not supposed to be um, a rational number or anything but an, an integer, right? So this means that, you know, A divides B plus C. That is the definition of divis divisibility. If I'm able to write B plus C as some integer multiplying A, then A divides B plus C. So that ends the proof. So it's just direct proof is just you using um, what you have, you know, to deduce the ending result. And that is the proof. And well, let's talk about the last problem, which I think is going to be fun. All right. So every odd integer is a difference of two squares. So this is just a statement. And I want to show that this is true. Right. So what do I do? Okay. I'm just going to go directly by just looking at some odd integers. Proof. Okay. Let's look at a proof here. So let's notice something. Okay. Notice that. So this is what we notice. One is an odd integer. So I'm just going to go with some of the positive odd integers. And you can look at other ones as well. This is given by 1 squared minus 0 squared. 3 is an odd integer. Now, this is given by 2 squared minus 1 squared. 5 is an odd integer, and this is going to give you by 3 squared minus 2 squared. Now, if you look at all these, it's, it's, they are actually true. And 7 is an odd integer, which is being given by um, 4 squared minus 3 squared. So, if you look at this carefully it's like all these are counting numbers one two three four and trust me nine will be given by five squared minus four squared and this is true so all of them are you know odd integers and these odd integers are generated by mostly like a counting number right so i can if i can pull some conclusion here if i can say something general for every odd integer then I can um, say that probably I can infuse mathematical induction here, but I just want to go straight directly to see what happens. Okay. Then I can say that every odd integer from here, all odd integers are given by some, you know, um, some k plus 1, if you look at this carefully, squared minus k squared. Now, what I mean by k, where k is an integer, okay, where k belongs to the integers. Why am I saying this? If I look at 1, 1 is given by zero, um, one, 1 squared minus 0 squared. And this can be written as if I say that in that case, for 1, let k to be equal to 0. So I'm going to have 0 plus 1 squared minus 0 squared. For 3, let k to be equal to 1. I'm going to have 1 plus 1 squared minus 1 squared. This is, a, this is just a pattern that I realized. Okay, so you can conclude that, okay, then each one of them is given by that. And when you have this to be able to say that indeed every odd integer can be written as this, let's make sure that this after expanding will give us the definition of an odd integer and that is going to be um, the proof.
right? So this is the direct flow I want to see. So if k plus 1 squared minus k squared simplifies to an odd integer, no, or maybe an odd integer, yeah? Integer, then we are done. So what we're going to do here is we're going to simplify k plus 1 squared minus k squared. And this one I simplify, I'm going to have k squared plus 2k plus 1 minus k squared, right? And this is going to give me, um, this guy can take that guy out. So I'm going to get 2k plus 1, which is the definition of an odd integer, right? So indeed, k plus 1 all squared minus k squared, directly, if you simplify that, it's going to give you um the odd in an odd integer right? i mean the definition of an odd integer where k belong to the com um sorry the integer so the definition of an odd integer is that every odd integer can be written as 2k plus 1 or 2n plus 1 2 like the definition is that it's 2 multiplying an integer plus 1 and so since k plus 1 squared minus k squared that is a difference of two squares so every odd integer is a difference of two squared right so yeah, this odd integer here that I have can be simplified to be this form. Again, you can try to manipulate this guy to get a difference of 2 squared if you want. And I think it depends on how you want to approach it, right? So yeah, that completes the proof. Like I said, you can also look at 2k plus 1 and think of this as maybe adding k squared to both sides. You know, 2k plus 1 minus k squared. Right? You can think of just pick directly you pick an odd integer and you write it in this form but okay let me add k squared and subtract k squared when you do that this side is going to simplify to k plus one squared minus k squared and this also completes the proof so i think starting from the general definition is very straightforward but this i was just trying to show you that indeed with these examples this is true i hope this makes sense right so the latter part would have been from the definition of definition of odd integer okay if you want to add that we know that every odd integer is 2n plus 1 this time I'm using n where n belong to z right but then you know that 2n plus 1 is the same as n squared plus 2n plus 1 minus n squared because when they cancel i'm able to get 2n plus 1 back right i've just added and subtracted n squared now this is equal to this part will simplify to n plus 1 squared minus n squared and that is the difference of two squares you have so this completes the proof as well right so this is tapping directly from the definition of the odd integers to show that it is indeed difference of two squares i hope you like this video and kindly subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed see you in our next lesson